Hello, welcome back to the channel. Right, today's only a quick video. Basically, it's an update on a video I did when I unboxed this, which was um, the two DVD and magazine collection, The Beatles, Twist and Shout. But it's the unofficial and unauthorised. So I thought I'd give you Beatles fans out there a little update of what I thought. Well, the presentation's lovely. The way it looks, the way it's packaged, and the magazine is wonderful. And I'll get to that after the actual content of the two discs. Right, well, this, I mean, basically, it's a load of historians um, and people. I mean, the first disc had Pete Best talking. And a little bit of me, right at the end, when he, he told me about all the hard work, uh, the Hamburg stuff, and all the stuff that he went through with them, it seemed a little bit brutal the way he got sacked. And literally, as soon as he was gone, the Beatles just went, Beatlemania started. So you can only imagine how he must have felt, really. I mean, don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love Ringo. You know I do. I love all the Beatles. But just put yourself in his boots. And when I was watching him describing this, the sacking, basically... Even though he holds himself very well, much respect and all that, Pete, you can see it in his eyes, gutted. But anyway, right, so there was a little bit of that. Um, I mean, there was all different historians talking about Brian in, uh, Epstein, uh, whose family owned a record store. He was more interested in the boys in leather than the actual music, which that's subject to, but, you know, he managed them quite well. There's Alan Williams in it, who was the Beatles' first manager, um, who sent them to Hamburg. And he, he said to Brian Epstein, don't touch them with a fucking barge pole. They will let you down. So there's quite a little bit, but basically it's music historians. There's a little bit on this too about how Ed Sullivan heard about the Beatles at the airport. Um, there's Bill Harry talking from Mersey Beat. Uh, Neil Innes has a little bit in there. To, you know, Neil Innes, you know, done the Ruttles. You know about the Ruttles, surely. It's the spoof parody of the Beatles story. Um, all you need is cash. <laughs> it is just a parody and it is a spoof, but some of the songs, Ouch, instead of Help, you know, Cheese and Onion, <laughs> they are bloody good, actually. Really bloody good. Anyway, go on, Stripey, carry on. It does go quite in depth uh, on please the recording of Please Please Me uh, with the Beatles, Hard Day's Night and Beatles for Sale. Um, but it's other people talking about it. There's a little bit of Beatles, there's quite a bit of black and white Beatles footage, but they repeat a lot of the same, you know, when they come get off at the airport in America, etc, etc. Um, there's some nice bits with Norman Smith talking about... Um, you know, Norman Smith was the sound engineer on the Beatles albums, the early ones. Um, I'm not even sure if he was probably throughout anyway, because I know he worked on Piper at the Gates of Dawn. He'd done Pink Floyd stuff too. He worked in Abbey Road. Um, who John Lennon nicknamed him Normal instead of Norman, because he was quite laid back, Norman Smith. Bit of a dude, I think. Um, yeah, quite laid back kind of guy. So... The thing is, I like hearing about the Beatles story. I do. You know, even though I've heard it time and time and time again, you know, but quality-wise, I would say it was WAF. It wasn't widescreen. It was 4.3, so it was just square in the middle of it all. Um, the quality wasn't great. The sound weren't fantastic. Some of the in interviews, though, were quite insightful. Quite insightful. But yeah, basically, you know, that's... Would I rate it? It's. A, I think the presentation's lovely. The idea of a two-disc DVD with a Beatle magazine that is quite chunky. And basically, the magazine... I mean, I haven't read it all yet. I've skipped over it. But the magazine is the Beatle story, really, you know. Starting off from the early days, um, you know, when they met. Going right up to Let It Be when they broke up and... Their solo stuff. So, you know, it sort of skips over their whole story. But what I did like, what I really liked, was at the end, right up the back there. I mean, this is out anyway, but 
I really like the way they presented the Beatles discography. You know, starting off with my Bonnie album, January 1962, goes all the way through. So you've got all the Beatles official albums up to Let It Be, with all the dates, etc. Then you've got the live albums, which I thought was kind of nice. Compilation albums, which there seems to be loads. Starting with all the Beatles, with Tony Sheridan, their guest. Jelly, Jolly Watt, Beatles Beat, Ain't She Sweet, Beatles vs. The Four Seasons, etc. etc. Et the greatest hits, collection of Beatles oldies. Hey Jude, and it goes right up, Let It Be Naked, Tomorrow Never Knows. I don't know about that one. The Beatles bootleg recordings on the 17th of December 2013. So it actually covers all of them. Which I've, I like the way it's just... And then all the singles, look. It's like, Liberty can I'll get you. And then we've even got EPs. So that I really liked. But it's not that you can't get that anywhere else. I just liked it the way it was. It's really clear, you know. Really clearly done. So I think the magazine's great. I think the magazine's lovely. I'm glad I watched the interviews. Will I be watching them again? I can't imagine in a hurry. So this will just go with... You know, all the other little bits of Beatles paraphernalia that you tend to pick up after you've got all the albums and stuff. Um, but it was a nice gift uh, from the mother-in-law. I really like it. But when I rate it, it looks nice in the collection. It does actually look lovely, doesn't it? But the actual content, eh, it's okay. It's all stuff we've seen before. But if you're a Beatles fan... I'd say, yeah, it's worth having. It's worth having just for the magazine alone. And it is a nice presentation. So, And I don't think it's very expensive. But I don't know. Like I said, it was a gift. Um, and I think it's only exclusive to the UK and possibly Ireland. I don't know for sure. Um, but I'm sure, you'd, you know, if people in the States like this sort of thing, they'd be able to get that sent over, I'm sure. So... So that's it, really. It was just a just a, a summary, really, of what I thought of it. Hope you made sense of this ramble. Um, yeah. So, have yourselves a good day, Beatle fans. I'll be back with another ramble real soon. Bye now.